to me, you get to see so many different little moments and glow ups and stories. And I think that that is gonna keep people watching. Hello, hello, hello. I am Joey Nolfi with Entertainment Weekly here today with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race, All Stars 8, and Wives, hide your husbands because mama's coming home. We've got Mrs. Kasha Davis here today. Hi, Mrs. Kasha Davis. A moment with you. That's really what this is all about. <laughs> yes, yes. I can die now that I've heard you say that in person. <laughs> That's lovely. Um, I love that you are back in the competition. Mrs. I love Kasha that I'm Davis. back. Yeah, I would hope so. I would be concerned <laughs> if you said that you weren't. You were such a delight on season seven, truly. It was so fun watching you. And I was so shocked when I realized you were actually the last of the Bitter Old Lady Brigade to appear on, all, on an all-star season? Is that group like I, still going? Well, you know, we get together every once in a while down in the lobby of the Senior Center. <laughs> And uh, I host the bingo, so I couldn't leave is really what it was all about because the bingos have been going on. And now we just started brunch. Yes. So, you know, we've got, we've had other people. Tempest comes in. Uh, oh, Tempest Jour, you've yes. heard of her. Oh, yeah. And she is uh, just fabulous. And so we run the, the brunch and it's been great. But uh, she also drives the bus back and forth to the mini mart. So <laughs> I, <laughs> she's busy. We need to get her on All Stars. Uh, Mrs. Wouldn't Tempest that be great? Jour. Yes, yeah. I would love to see that. Tick tock, we're old. You gotta hurry up with us old because <laughs> you never know, it could be. The real first and most important question, Mrs. Kasha Davis, how is Mr. Kasha Davis? Oh, Mr. Davis is just darling. Yeah. He, thank goodness, has good credit. He has a great pulse and a large penis. No, he's home uh, really making the good, like consistent dollars and I'm out doing the gig work and we just had our youngest daughter's wedding and it oh, was just marvelous. You talk about Special moments. I mean, I met them when they were seven and nine, and these two kids are now 27 and 30, and the youngest just got married. We have a new son-in-law. Mm -hmm. He's fabulous. That's so sweet. I love that you are all about the family, but how do they deal with your absence whenever you were gone for All Stars 8? I imagine that was pretty difficult for them. I mean, they probably enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lot. Um, I, I think I'm the one that gets everybody to go out to dinner. Our mm -hmm. kids, I would say that they have learned a lot from you know me to celebrate the moment. And honestly, the relationship that we have with their mom has gotten stronger and better. And we're an, a great example for them of what a family could yes. be. And that just makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I've loved about you. I think your aesthetic um, references those sort of like old timey housewives and the family unit. I know that you are also a parent, obviously. You and Tamisha Iman and Tyra Sanchez are some of the few like real parents we've had on Drag Race. And speaking of families, you are involved in like Drag Queen Story Hour and I've seen you bring children on stage with you before. You're out there proving that drag queens are human and they're people despite these like absurd things that we're seeing oh in, in politics right now. I don't know if you saw that in Tennessee they're actually introducing a bill that could pass that would make drag illegal to right. perform in public. So um, I just want to hear from you if you have ever, in your experience of doing these shows, ever seen a drag queen do something inappropriate to a child. No, of course not. And honestly, my take on Drag Story Hour is that it is an opportunity for me to be able to do something that was not there for me when I was a child. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a little boy, girl, gal, girl, boy, fella, I like to say, Elton John, Barry Manilow, Liberace, they were all straight. I don't know if you know who any of those people are. But, you know, so there was no one present in the media that was living, you know, authentic, out gay lives. It was in the closet kind of a life. And it is so much more than gender and sexuality. We have everyone coming together, celebrating exactly who they are. And I'm very proud to say that I have worked on my own television show, mm -hmm. children's show, yep. Imagination Station. We've got four episodes. We're waiting for somebody to pick it up. And it's, right? It's gonna be fantastic. We have the season done. It is, imagine Mrs. Doubtfire hosting Pee Wee's Playhouse in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. And then you get the gist of what it's all about. <laughs> That totally speaks to my heart. <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire is my favorite movie, and I'm from Pittsburgh, so Mr. Rogers, like that is, I am on board yep. already. Well, I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania, oh, really? so we have the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania yes. right? <laughs> Although I don't make my own clothes, I'm not Amish. I have good credit. I don't either. Um, and yeah, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? We just shop. Yes, we, we just shop. Trust We're the designers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love the work that you're doing, and I think it's very important to do it this time in particular. Do you have like a particular, a particularly memorable or touching moment that you've had in you know interacting with children while in drag that sort of you remember to this day? I could tell you so many wonderful stories. The first one, this little boy after the show, a little bit older than the normal audience member, comes up to me and says, "I just want you to know, I know you're not a girl." 
And I'm like, you figured it out. <laughs> you know, and then after that, he was my helper for the rest of the day. Aww. And he just wanted to, you know, be honest on how he felt. And then, after a wonderful experience at Drag Story Hour, we have several hundred kids and their parents and grandparents, and his dad comes up to me in tears and says to me, thank you for showing me that my child has a community. And it just, oh, it just blows my mind because I grew up in a difficult situation with my dad. And I know now as a 51 year old fella dressed in drag that my dad was doing his best to protect me. He didn't know. And so there weren't those examples. And so if I could be that example for a parent that might be in a small town and show them that their child has a community and a place and that they're gonna be not just okay, that they can thrive, yeah. that's the payment, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about yeah. for me. And what do you say to these politicians who want to sort of take that stuff away? Honestly, come to a show. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. I have not been to everyone's Drag Story Hour, but the one that I do, uh, they say you have an agenda. What's your agenda? Absolutely, we do. If you happen to see someone different in the world, treat them with kindness. It's about kindness. Mm -hmm. It's about inclusivity. It's about community. It's about celebrating who you are without abandon. Mm -hmm. And you know, obviously, that changes for all of us in life. It evolves. And the more that you have others, because we are all one, the more comfortable you feel in your own skin and the more you can thrive and bloom. Yeah. What a beautiful message. Um, and now uh, to segue into uh, Drag Race, um, let's talk about your time on the show and coming back to All Stars. I mean, season seven, it's no secret that it has a reputation for being like a polarizing season. I'll right. we'll say that, uh, which I don't understand. I truly love season seven. I really do. And I've said as much on our podcast at EW, which everybody should go listen to. So in hindsight, do you understand maybe why the fans feel that way about season seven? Well, listen, you came off of season six with the top four of the, the fabulous and yeah. Bianca Del Rio, to, to me, is just absolutely incredible. So you've got that to come off of. And then they made some changes in the way that we did the, the promo and some, some things like that. And so here's what it is, for me, what I love about it, is that we're all workhorses and that everybody in that on that season has made a career. And there are some other seasons where some gals have not. And so that is special to us because we had that sort of, you know, ugh, I hate season seven. It started where I hated it. And then people are like, well, I don't think it's that bad. And then you have Trixie Mattel and Katya like just exploding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everybody is finding their way and their individuality. And I think it's special. And it did sort of change the way that Drag Race was kind of being presented. Mm -hmm. And so we were that first season that did that. Yeah, it's, it's always surprising to me because people have that reaction to the season. But like you said, there's so many people that have come out of that right. season. That, like, I mean, Ginger, Trixie, Katya, Kennedy, Davenport. I mean, it's just like, it's such a yeah. great- and Sasha Bell? Yeah. I mean, right? You get to see all of her. Yes. I think you have to pay a fee, but I mean, listen, that's great. Why not? Yeah, she, she found herself and involved, everybody, so. Yes, yeah, so shout out to Sasha Bell, something I was not <laughs> expecting in this interview. Um, um, so you're continuing the season seven excellence into All Stars Eight, right? Yes, I was so of. proud to be a part of the opening credits to season seven, and uh, now, uh, you know, the biggest gift I've had since season seven is that I identified my alcoholism, and I, I my cut my phrase is "There's always time for a cocktail," and that is great for everybody except uh, some of us that maybe can't handle it or. It uh, maybe gets a little bit too much. Yeah. And I was brought to my knees and I made this kind of statement to whatever there is in the universe that I'm powerless over alcohol and everything began to change for me. We're working on seven years of sobriety wow. now. Congratulations. And yes, and so again, another one of those types of things that I like to talk about because specifically in our community, many people find that they have to turn to or they choose to turn to drugs and alcohol yeah because many times their family disowns them, etc., and you find comfort there. And so here is an example of somebody that found a different way. There's so many different ways to sobriety if that's what you need to do, but you can have fun, you can dress up, you can live life, and you could be in the moment. And so on season seven, I wasn't in the moment. I'm here right now with you, and I'm very present, and that just makes Great. me happy. So going into the competition a second time with that mindset, how did that change how you approached Drag well, Race? I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I mean, honestly, I was in such a 
place of comparison, and uh, th and so then I would anesthetize, whether that would mm -hmm. be alcohol or Xanax. And so for me now to be present and feel, well, if I'm nervous, I'm nervous. That must mean I care. If I'm comparing, then I need to take a step back and believe in myself. And so these are the things that you learn in this recovery process. So I was feeling as very present in the moment and just thrilled to experience it all. Mm -hmm. Did you, do you have any like mementos or things that you kept from season seven? Absolutely. That... So many things. The first mm -hmm. thing is that I'm an authorized user on RuPaul's credit card. He never noticed. <laughs> he and He's it's not been, missing it. <laughs> He's not missing it. And, and he approves all the purchases. No, my favorite item is this photo that was taken and so they started the uh, press tours and the premieres mm -hmm. and here we all are in this moment together Aww. when the episode was airing mm -hmm. and we're all there we just you know walked the red carpet and this is on my makeup station at home and it just this is a moment that changed my life where this was this is actually happening you know as a child i grew up dreaming of what hollywood would be like and you know and there it was you know behind these these bars and and all together, and you've got Trixie and Katya and Violet throwing the finger. I mean, everybody's <laughs> consistently who they are. Yes. I think I have about four cocktails in front of me, still drinking that. So it really is something that reminds me of what a gift this whole thing has been. Speaking of Violet, though, I have to, I want to talk about her a little bit. What did you think of that whole fashion photo review stuff that went, they had a very rough summer, uh, yeah. Violet and Gottmik, so what did you think of that? Do you think that certain fans were sort of blowing that whole thing out of proportion? Yeah, listen, you know, Violet's a <laughs> and I mean, she is, and I, that's just, and she'll say it herself, and it's a, it's a level of confidence, it's, it's part of her fabulosity. What I really love about Violet and Gottmik is that Gottmik, there's a balance there. Yes. You know, you get the, the 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 over the top and then the reality and the grounding energy of Gutmix. So I think they're fabulous together. Mm -hmm. So so what? You know, people have some strong opinions and things. People are talking. Everybody. That's what Violet wants. Pe yeah. Violet wants people to talk mm -hmm. trash about her so that she can go out on stage and then they can't help but say how perfect she looks. <laughs> when I see her, I say, what a waste. Oh my God! I mean, it's drag. That's, at the end of the day, it's drag. Yeah. Like this is what this is what we can expect. It's it's yeah. I think people are maybe blowing out of proportion just a little bit. Um, I also want to talk about your drag sisters with Darian. I didn't realize that Darian Lake. A lot of people can't believe that. So when I first started uh, going out to the clubs in Rochester, New York, at a place called Mother's, my drag mother Naomi King, God rest her soul, oh, yeah. she was the show director. So she had Pandora Box mm -hmm. and Darian Lake mm -hmm. and Aggie Dune and Ambrosia Salad and these gals were spectacular. And I was just the drunk who was tipping them. Oh. And, but I was enjoying it, never thinking I would do drag. And I had a theater background, and then I saw the most fabulous queen called Miss Richfield 1981. Mm -hmm. And boy, she was telling a story, she was singing live, and she had a message. And these queens, like Miss Richfield and Dixie Longgate and, and Jackie Beat and Coco Peru, these were the celebrities and the stars. And I didn't, when I saw Darian, she was so pretty. And I thought, I can't do that. And then Darian uh, said to me, well, uh, don't be afraid to try and look pretty. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's a shady thing to say. Um, and so I brought a level of camp to the group. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been working together for years, right from the beginning. Yeah. So, I mean, you're obviously both on the season yes. now. Did you, like, help each other prepare for the season at all? Well, you know, you're not supposed to talk about it. <laughs> But yes, we helped each other. Of course we did. It's you know what we can borrow from one another, what we can help, how we can help each other, and push each other to do things that are maybe not in our comfort zone. And that comfort level of having one another there is is a blessing because you know the gals, you know them, you might perform with them, you might tour with them, you might meet them at DragCon, etc. But when you're actually competing together, it's a different vibe. Yes. Yeah. So in which ways do you think she pushed you out of your comfort zone? In which ways did you push her out of her comfort zone? Oh gosh. Well, so Darian uh, will cover everything up with a lot of humor. And she has a difficult time sometimes being honest and being open and real about how she actually feels. She'll throw humor yeah. over things. A lot of comedians do that, right? And I certainly have and do. And I think she pushes me in terms of the confidence level. Because I've, I, you know, honestly, I started doing drag later in life. And so she was like, you know what? You want to wear a leotard? Wear a leotard. If you want to show your legs, show your legs. Whatever. And so she would push me in that way as well. So uh, to be more competitive. You know, I have this theater background. Well, whoa, we're all going to do great today and we're all going to do well and everybody is important. But it's a competition. And you really have to get in there and you have to compete and fight for yourself first. Yeah. And definitely. so she will tell me, 
to get out there and do that. Help, but think of yourself first. And that helped this season. And that definitely helped. Great. How would you describe the evolution that you have gone through aesthetically and what we'll see on All Stars 8 from you? Well, the humidity the here just ruined my 1960s <laughs> hair. Uh, no, I, exa exactly. You know, what happens is, you have the gift of being on RuPaul's Drag Race and you no longer just shop at the Goodwill. You get to meet all these fabulous designers who are like, you know what you might want to do? Wear hip pads. Or how about a wig that's not just shaken out of a bag, right? So like these, exactly. So you get to work with these fantastic designers and you get to work and meet all the gals out on tour. You know, we get the opportunity to go to these uh, clubs and you meet the gals, the local gals, and you're learning from them. You're learning from each other. I hate it. I hate it when somebody books me and says, we put you in the other room and you've got your four grapes, a couple of green Skittles and a bottle of water. Get the hell out of here. I want to sit down with the girls yeah. and learn and build relationships because who knows, they could be the next winner of RuPaul's Drag Race and then they'll book me yes. because I was a nice lady yes. is what it comes down to. A businesswoman with a right. plan. Of That's course. Yes. It's never about the gig, kids. It's about the one after that, that they invite you back for. Good advice, everybody take note. Uh, so the question that I'm asking to everybody on this cast, uh, you cannot say yourself for this, who do you think is going to surprise people most in terms of their aesthetic or their glow up on All Stars 8? Jessica Wilde. Superstar! Mm -hmm. What about yeah. on the runway? Who do you think is going to surprise people most on the runway? <sighs> surprise people most on the runway, Jimbo. I'm not sure that it would be a surprise, but Jimbo's afloat in a parade. <laughs> I mean, there's so much happening, and there's little minions underneath carrying her around. It's just fantastic. What's like a good tease you can give for All Star Satan? What's going to gag the fans about the season the most? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, the, 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 we're the underdogs. You know, everybody has been through the gamut. Something has happened. There's been a struggle, or there has been sort of that, like everybody's been talking about this one's attitude, or this, that, and the other. And so everybody on the cast is looking to redeem in a way. You know, and I think that's pretty special because so many of us go through that in life yeah. where we have a struggle, we have something. And so to me, you get to see so many different little moments and glow ups and stories. And I think that that is going to keep people watching. Yeah, that is a great tease. I cannot wait to see what you and all the other queens do on this season. Thank you so much for being here <laughs> You know with what me. it's going to be? It's going to be a hoot and a holler. There we go. There we go. <laughs> that's thank, it. Thank you so much, Mrs. Kasha Davis. I really thank appreciate you. your time. You're just darling. Oh, thank you. Isn't he darling? <laughs> well, if she says it, it must be true. <laughs> um, stay tuned for more with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 8.